The fate of magic hangs in the balance, but if Wonder Woman and her team want to save the day, they're going to have to go to some very sinister places indeed. All this and more on the pages of Justice League Dark issue number 9. Let's hop on in together and find out what happens next, shall we? Well, now this is interesting. As the comic opens up, we don't actually pick up from where we left off in the previous issue, wherein everyone and everything was screwed. Instead, we pick on up with Man Bat, doing a kind of post-battle interview with Wonder Woman. Oh my god, did he start a podcast now? No one should start start a podcast. No, it's for his whole magical records thing he's been working on since the series began. Basically, the question he's been trying to answer, and that everyone has been giving him a very different answer to, is what is magic? But to truly answer that question, we got a flashback to the fight that was. You see, Cersei and her Injustice League Dark had the good guys against the rope and was moving on in for the kill, but that's when Wonder Woman made a late appearance. Only get this, it wasn't Diana as we know her, instead it was Wonder Woman in a brand new Hecate form. But wait, you're probably saying, I thought Cersei was the witch marked, I thought she wielded the full power of the Hecate, wasn't that what this whole arc was about? Well, yes and no, as Wonder Woman says, Cersei only thought she had the power of the Hecate, she had been forcing it, trying to basically beat the magical powers of the universe into submission and see her as master, and well, that didn't work. Wonder Woman was always meant to be the chosen champion, she just wasn't ready to make that big jump until right now when things seem to be at their most dire, and with that, Hecate Wonder Woman is able to pretty much dismantle the whole Injustice League Dark. Which kind of fits into what her and Kirk were talking about. What is magic? Kirk believed that it was horror, and I mean, really, why shouldn't he wear Wonder Woman? Surprise, surprise, thinks the heart of magic is wonder. Making the truly impossible possible like she's doing right now. It's in that moment as well. Well, Clarion the Witch Boy and Solomon Grundy run away. And Papa Midnight, being the wheeling and dealing Constantine foe that he is, decides to try and strike a deal for himself. And just like that, the Injustice League Dark disbands. But hey, what about the Eclipso threat? Well, about that. As we discovered in the previous issue, Eclipso is the Eclipse, the polar opposite of the Hecate, and because of that, it's the only thing that can stop Wonder Woman in this brand new shiny form. Everyone else on Diana's team is too beaten up right now to help, but luckily a savior comes in the form of Dr. Fate. Yes, that's right, Khalid, the young apprentice of Dr. Fate, managed to give Nabu a much-needed pep talk off-panel, and because of that, the Lord of Order is ready to put things back into order. So, yeah, we got a brand new Dr. Fate now, and it's the old Dr. Fate, not as in old as in Kent Nelson old, but as in old as in the previous Dr. Fate. Dr. Fate and Wonder Woman join forces, returning the rest of the team to their former selves and dealing with the Floronic Man and any stragglers left behind on the bad guys team. But what will be done with Circe? Well, Wonder Woman showing that mercy that has made her so famous actually gives Circe what she always wanted. The sorceress can have all the magic power she wanted, the power that she's lusted after, the power that she thought would make her happy, and the only downside is, is that she has to go to another dimension to have it. This means magic in the universe is balanced and Wonder Woman doesn't have to keep being the heck Wonder Woman also hopes that maybe some time in solitary confinement will get Cersei to work through her issues, and the next time they need her, she'll actually be on the good guy's team. And thus the day is saved, although not really. To do what she did, Wonder Woman had to strike a deal with the Upside Down Man of the other kind, who are still coming and who are still a threat, but will be a threat for next time. And so that was Justice League Dark issue 19, everybody, and even though it's technically not James Tynion's final issue on the series, he's going to be moving into more of a co-writing role starting with issue 20. This does feel like an end in a lot of ways. Not a bad ending, but not the ending I wanted either. I would say this final arc here felt top-heavy, like the writer was trying to put so much story into such a short amount of time. If nothing else, though, we are promised fun and interesting things to come. There's still the matter of Swamp Thing and all the different parliaments and the return of Animal Man that need to be dealt with. But by and large, quite a few of the story's long-running plot lines are wrapped up here in this issue. We have a new Doctor Fate, the Hecate threat has been dealt with, etc., etc. And I guess, too, from a character arc point of view, too, this is Wonder Woman fully, completely accepting her role in the magical world now, where before she was always kind of divorced from it or an outsider looking in. Overall, I'd give this a 7.5 out of 10. Good, not great, wished for a little more, honestly. 
Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.